This last weekend, I went to my favorite toy and advertising show in Southern California, and it was amazing. You know, it looks pretty chill in the photos, but it's always like so crazy. Highlights include seeing what is regarded as the first Batman action figure ever made. Needless to say, there's loads and loads of really cool stuff. I could do a whole video on things I wasn't able to get, but I'm going to show you guys what I did pick up. Okay, so this show lined up on the same weekend as my favorite flea in Southern California too, so I got tons of stuff. Also, predictably, most of my cool finds came from friends. So moral of the story, be fucking nice and make friends and you'll find cool shit. Everyone's so dang nice at these things. I love okay, it. Okay, let's talk about toys. Found one of these really early Winnie the Pooh piglet dolls. And this gigantic plastic face bunny. She's over three and a half feet tall, and that's for a reason. She has these little straps on her feet, so you can put your feet under her feet, and you dance with it. Isn't that so cute? I got another one of these Marx figures in box. This one is Sir Stewart, the Silver Knight. Again, with tons of original accessories. This one even has this little feather that goes in the back of his helmet. Marx is one of my favorite toy lines. I think these are so, so cool. Also, this box had this 90s toy show flyer in it. I love stuff like this. It just feels like a little bit of California toy history and gives a little backstory to the figure. I love it. Got some Rock Lords figures. I totally fell in love with this weird metal bowl sculpture. And speaking of metal, I got these Metal Men figures. I love these guys. They're so cool. Got this little cocktail barware personal ashtray set and I found these 30s sunglasses and this 60s sunglass case. Love it. Found these two early Barbie lookalike dolls. They need some accessories pieces but I met a really amazing woman at the flea who's gonna help me piece them together. I'm so excited. I had to pick up this growing up Skipper doll. She has really nice hair in her original outfit. She's freaking awesome. Honestly, like, so strange. Such a weird doll. I kind of can't believe it was made, but it sort of makes sense at the same time. So I'm gonna show you how she works. So basically you just crank her arm backwards and she grows a little bit taller and she grows a little bit of something else. She was marketed as two dolls in one and yeah, I see it's that. It's just so funny that Mattel... Basically Mattel makes Skipper and Mitch because Barbie's criticized as being too sexual. For a teenage girl doll. And then like this is what... Mattel comes up with a few years later for Skipper. Needless to say, this is very controversial doll and it ended up being discontinued. So it's honestly a really fun piece of doll history. I do see the intention of being instructive with the design of this doll. And I'm just endlessly fascinated with the popularity with this line in contrast with its endless controversy. Okay, moving on, I got this AD&D wizard. I love him. He's going in my Fortress of Fame. Got a Tamagora, a Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Got some bucket list, Nancy Funk. Can Polyville toy shop with some figures. I guess I'm officially starting a collection of this double vision drunk guy motif. I have a few other pieces I'll have to show but you. I just love him. Got this sweet baby Godzilla lighter. Two of my favorite Kittles, Apple Blossom and Shirley Strawberry. So cute. Got a pair of these really rare 60s lovable uglies trolls. We got the baby elephant and the baby giraffe. They're so cute. Some more vintage glassware. You guys know I love devils and these happy face cups are so cute. Oh, my pet monster friend. Okay, these pieces I'm really excited about because I somehow was able to get what I think is every size of this doll. I'm going to do a whole video about her because it seems really rare to have them all together like but this. But this is Poor Pitiful Pearl. Contemporary and similar design idea as Little Miss No Name. She actually came up a lot when I did that video about Little Miss No Name. So yeah, I think I'm going to do a video all about also, her. isn't this baby lamb to die for? I got this Inbox Micronauts Andromeda and this Loose Oberon. These are basically the mounts for Baron Karza and the Force Commander. There, there's one here. And if you put them together, they turn into centaurs. It's pretty amazing. Also, you can take out their legs and put on these little wheels. So they're like centaur vehicle, horses, robot dudes. Super cool. I got these from my friend Tony at Toys of the Universe. I think he's my only friend that has a TikTok, weirdly enough, but hi, Tony, thank you. Also got this gargoyle from the Fortress of Fangs AD&D playset from him. It's in really good condition. The AD&D Fortress of Fangs is the best playset ever, in my opinion, so this piece is great. Got some Garfields. These ones are so cute. Look at his little face. Ugh. I'm officially a Furby magnet. I honestly didn't think I could top Shelby, but this mint in box sealed 2005 Furby he is kind of blowing my socks off right now. He's absolutely perfect. Really, really stoked to find that. I feel so lucky. I got this really cute 
partial rubber face goat in absolutely perfect condition. He's so cute and happy. I love his little horns and his little goatee. Little billy goat, I've never seen that before. He's so cute. Okay, I know I've already said this, but I do think this might be my favorite piece that I found altogether. I've literally never seen something like this before. It's a late 70s Star Wars Darth Vader velvet painting original artwork like i'm freaking floored at this piece it's absolutely amazing i'm really gonna try to find a place in my house for it but oh my gosh i love it okay i did get a bunch of books too i got more like coffee table books and like reference books this time like, i have a collection of vintage sewing books from different decades just for like reference for making costumes or like whatever sewing also i just think they're fun to look at i do the same thing with like needlework and craft books they're just really good reference to have if you like making stuff and they always have like step by steps and how to and I love these 70s cookbooks just as straight up art photography books also in this one you can learn how to make an entire chicken in the microwave if that's of interest to you okay this book might be my favorite though it's Eleanor King's Guide to Glamour it's from 1957 it's really really rare and it's basically charm school in a book with all kinds of like sort of wild 1950s beauty standards but it teaches you posture it teaches you how to have nicer feet it teaches you how to pose like Elizabeth Taylor exercises to grow a larger chest really amazing reference book for 1950s beauty okay i still didn't cover everything but this video is long as heck so i'm gonna stop now uh, my toy shelves are really full right now so a lot of this stuff is gonna be available and i'm pretty behind on tiktok with posting stuff but i am really on top of posting what is available on my shop instagram anyway i hope you enjoyed seeing all the finds thank you so much